So a while ago, I put out a video about Peruna Weep and wanted to follow that up with a little bit more information on the trail and the hike itself. So I'm going to put together this video to give more information in case you want to go there. First off, if you didn't see the other video, shame on you, but uh, put a card for it here. Check that out. It's pretty cool. So assuming you haven't seen that video, Peruna Weep is a canyon that extends, it comes from Mount Carmel Junction, Utah, extends actually into Zion. It's the east fork of the Virgin River, meets up with the Virgin in Zion. Uh, Peruna Weep is the area outside between the border of Zion National Park and Mount Carmel Junction, Utah. Mileage is tough to say because there's about a thousand different routes you can take. The canyon itself starts as an open wash. Didn't do that part, so I don't have any video of it, but it just gets absolutely beautiful as you get further and further towards the border with Zion National Park. So not only does it have this section uh, called the Barracks that is very similar to the Zion Narrows, but it has numerous side canyons, French Canyon, Rock Canyon, Poverty Wash, Misery Canyon, it's just a few of them. There's plenty more. There's a bunch of unnamed side canyons. It starts out as this red rock and then eventually goes more of the grayish that you're used to from Zion. Has those uh, tealish, I don't know what color, what you'd say, grayish blue waters from the Virgin. It's just, there's a whole bunch of things to see when you're down there and a bunch of diversity to it. So really interesting place. Mention that there are a bunch of ways you can get in, uh, a bunch of ways to get out. So the traditional route, is to start at Mount Carmel Junction, you backpack in. I forget how many miles that is. It's like 10, 15. It's, yeah. a, it's a good day hike. I mean, it's a good amount of miles for a backpacking trip. Read that the beginning of it, it crosses through some private property, which you're fine to do that. Obviously be respectful of the, of the land, and if there's any gates, close them and leave them the way you found them. Follow the path, follow the road. Don't sidetrack and get on this person's property. They're kind enough to let people go through so they can do this hike. But it's also kind of an open, wider wash. Bunch of cows, bunch of cow shit. I'm assuming it's sandy. I mean, we didn't do that part, but it's by, a, well, you'll see later. Uh, it's sandy in the area, walking in sand with a backpack. Not a big fan of that. So Rock Canyon was gonna be our destination for our campsite. And we found some canyoneering beta that took us to basically right at the top of Rock Canyon. And there was a canyoneering sneak route. You could either technical canyoneer with a rope and rappelling and helmets and all that gear, and go down rock, or once you do that, a canyoneer comes back up a sneak route, it's called, that's non-technical. We took the sneak route down. Great, right? We cut a lot of miles, a lot, a significant, like a day's hiking off of this trip. But in order to get there, you go to Coral Pink Sand Dunes, and there's a lot of sand at Coral Pink Sand Dunes in the surrounding area. All of those roads that we took, I'll put information on the roads we took in the description. I didn't see, I mean, what we read, that beta, it said, oh, they're clearly marked. I didn't see any road signs, like none. Mm -hmm. I saw a couple. Don't contradict me. Sorry, but they are there. <laughs> so, <laughs> They're numbered. I was fearing for my life. I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the roads. So, so Which is any, good as a navigator. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, there's road signs. Tina saw them. I didn't see them. I had it marked on GPS. Highly recommend that you have a second way to know the route. And uh, it's deep sand. It is deep sand like we've never driven down before. So we were in a lifted forerunner with off-road tires you can't stop. If you're going uphill on a sandy road, this deep of sand, you can't stop. We, we stopped and we had to actually start spinning tires when he tried to go again. Had to back up, get to a spot, and then kind of get some momentum and go up. So if you go in there, have the appropriate car, must be four wheel drive. Uh, we had spots we saw where the ruts were deep enough that I think you would belly out. So the high clearance, highly recommended. Don't make this your first deep sand drive. It's about 12 to 14 miles on these roads, middle of nowhere, no cell reception. If you get stuck, 
you better be able to get yourself out. So get your sand traction boards, have a shovel, be prepared to let the air out of your tires. That helps a ton, but then you need an air compressor so you can blow them back up. So I was very nervous. Dina was very nervous. Um, we made it, we made it fine, but it's, it was not fun. Yeah, obviously if you have experience driving in sand, it's no big deal, but we really didn't. So big consideration. On the plus side, we had to hike about one mile, four or 500 feet of elevation loss, and we were at Rock Canyon at the confluence of uh, East Fork of the Virgin River and Rock Canyon. Okay, so it's a canyon, it's got narrows, and it has a river in the middle of it. So uh, obviously prone to flash flood, don't want to go in there if it's going to rain, if it's going to, uh, especially thunderstorms, any chance of rain. Be aware of the weather, however long you're going to be down there. Check it, double check it, and camp appropriately. Don't camp low. There's plenty of benches that you can get up on so that there are safe spots. Since it does have constant flow of water through it, and that does fluctuate, obviously, the, the sweet spot is um, 40 CFS. You want the flow around that or less. Any more than that, it gets pushy. If it gets significantly higher than that it's suicide so you don't want to go in it's sort of like if you looked at the zion narrows at all they don't let people in there unless it's 120 cfs or less i'm not sure where you check the flow for that i'll look online and put a link in the description make sure you know what the flow is before you go in that water's pushy i mean you get down towards the bottom it's even it gets pushier the further you go so i can see how if you had too much you would be in trouble and especially you get down to the narrows and at the end of the narrows at the border of zion which there's a waterfall so don't want to get pushed off that standard disclaimer in all these videos uh, what you see in this video or the conditions that we experienced conditions change in the outdoors floodwaters come through they wash things around rocks branches trees what you see in the video isn't necessarily what you're going to find and be ready to adapt to deal with the conditions you face. Some of the other conditions in there, uh, poison ivy. I've heard there's a lot of poison ivy. We didn't see that much when we were there, but there was enough and I've heard it gets excessive. So if you're allergic to poison ivy, keep that in mind. Long pants, long sleeves, it's a good idea if the weather permits. Uh, you're probably going to run into poison ivy. As far as animals go, probably the same wildlife you'd see around Zion. All we saw was cows when we were there, but we did see some big cat prints, so they're out there. Uh, you know what? I'm not a wildlife expert. I'm not going to tell you how to deal with the wildlife. That's what you could come across out there. They're pretty used to people there by Zion, but uh, don't try to pet any of them. I don't know. <laughs> no. So yeah, this is going to probably sound kind of stupid, but there are cows there, and that was probably the one thing that I really, like if there's anything I could complain about, it's there was a lot of cow shit. And it's unpleasant in some spots, but there were also cows. And we came up on the baby cows on our side and mom and dad were on the other side of the creek and they were watching to make sure and we had to kind of gradually skirt around and just be mindful that yeah, a cow, they taste incredible but they're also big and they also probably don't like it if you mess with their babies. I mean, they're cows, but just be aware. Cows are parents too. That is, it's a pretty decent segue into water. You've got this whole river that's flowing for miles and miles and miles and the cows are in the river the entire time. Not only that, we came across two different dead animals that were so decayed, I don't know what they were. Mountain goats, I don't know. I don't know. We're right in the river. So, yum. Uh, that's great. Just bring a filtration device. But however, there are a lot of springs. So we were actually able to, they were spaced often enough that we were able to filter all our water out of a spring, which we probably could have just drank it from them, but we filter them anyway just to be safe. So water's available year round. It does need purification and there are springs. Another thing you might run across out there, we didn't really have any problems where we're throwing the bind to each other like you see what were those things when we were kids where somebody Gilligan's always Island. somebody ollie gilligan was always stuck in the quicksand quicksand's there tina stuck a pole in it and it went down a couple six eight inches but it's there so be aware of it i don't think you really have to worry that oh my goodness quicksand but there's quicksand the other thing is campsites there were plenty of options for camping 
from a couple miles upstream of Rock Canyon, really good ways down towards the barracks, further than we thought. So you, you're probably not gonna have any trouble finding a campsite. Not that many people out there, so it's first come, first serve. Dispersed, they are not maintained campsites. It's just find the spot that works for your tent and camp. Probably should have mentioned earlier on, from a permitting standpoint, no permits required for this hike. It's on BLM ground. Plan your trip, go out and hike. Gotta make another drink, I'll be back. So, that brings me to gear. I'm not gonna get into, you know, bring a backpack, bring a tent, bring food. You should already have your backpacking gear set up and, and that kit ready. I'm gonna just talk about what's unique to this particular canyon. The first thing being shoes. You're gonna be in deep sand, you're gonna be in the water, you're gonna be walking on rocks, on the dirt, back and forth across the river multiple times. Your shoes are not gonna stay dry. So for that kind of hiking, I just like regular hiking shoes, wool socks, works great for me. But do whatever works best for you. Besides that, uh, lots of in the water. Now, when we were there, the flow was around 42 cubic feet per second. There were no spots that we had to get in anything that was even to our waist. It was mostly knees and below. So uh, wetsuits not required, but it is wise to have quick dry clothes and then something dry to switch into at the end of the night. Same with shoes. Your shoes are going to be soaking wet. Bring an extra pair of clothes. Other than that, you're in the sun a lot. Sunscreen, bug spray, depending on when you're there. Mileage, it's going to depend on your route. Uh, you, like I said, there's a lot of ways in and a lot of ways out. Uh, we went in at Rock Canyon, hiked downstream, really beautiful scenery as you went down towards Poverty Wash. We checked out a couple of side canyons. We were there for two nights. Hiked up French Canyon a little bit, beautiful red walls and just in and out of the creek. The further down you get, the more slotted up and the taller the walls get. Again, more of the red rock. This is where you start getting the barracks. The barracks start, yeah, actually seeing the, the barracks start in different areas. Uh, I had always thought they started way down towards the end around Misery Canyon and went to Labyrinth Falls, but um, also read that they start back as far as Poverty Wash. Either way, it slots up and it's got these red canyon walls and then it'll widen up a little bit. Eventually you'll come to this waterfall. I've seen stuff and read stuff that said that sometimes you can climb down it. Sometimes you can't. When we were there, you couldn't climb down it. If you can get in a deep pool, you would actually have to swim through that. The alternative route, which is what we took, is up and to the left. There were two cracks that we saw in the rock face before the waterfall. Take the one that's furthest from the waterfall. There was a cairn there when we were there. Just look for footprints if you're in doubt. And you just climb up and around. There were some hand lines that were in place. Uh, I brought a some webbing just in case th there was nothing there. I don't think it was necessary, but helpful. Just depends on what you're comfortable with. Come back down the other side and totally bypasses the waterfall. So you get past this obstacle, continue on down canyon. Eventually you'll come up to Misery Canyon. We checked that out. Beautiful, but you can't get too far up it. Right after Misery, going downstream is what I was looking for and what I consider the barracks. You've got the East Fork of the Virgin River with the bluish gray waters. Uh, you have the high gray walls on both sides. Just absolutely stunning scenery in this area. I don't know how much further down it was. Not, not very far, mile or so. And you come up to the Powell Plaque. It's pretty hard to find. You have to look around. You, you should have all this stuff marked ahead of time on your GPS so you have an idea where these where the landmarks are, because this is also the traditional exit up to Checkerboard Mesa. Uh, the traditional route is spot a car, Checkerboard Mesa, take the other car down to Mount Carmel Junction, hike up, go through the barracks, hike back out at Checkerboard Mesa, which is also the sneak route for Misery Canyon if you're canyoneering that. If you want, you can continue on a short bit further to Labyrinth Falls, we didn't make it. We didn't leave enough time. We had to turn around at the Powell Plaque. I have heard that there is, it's pretty tough to get to these falls. And a guy told me to bring a hand line or bring some webbing. Unfortunately, I can't talk to that. But 
just be prepared. It's not an easy hike, I don't think. So read up and do some more research if that's going to be your ultimate goal. But um, yeah, I, you know, it's tough to make a specific guide for this because there are so many options and so many ways you can approach it. But hopefully this gives you a little bit more information on what to expect and some of your options. And yeah, if you're thinking of checking it out, give it a shot. It is a really cool place. Very diverse scenery and just beautiful. I don't know what to say at the end of these. I think you just said it. That's all I got. If you aren't in long, long sleeve pants, long sleeve pants. <laughs> Is long sleeve pants a thing? Yes. I love doing that. And you could go segue from cows into water. Because <laughs> that's a natural thing. There's a leaf in my drink, man. What the? It'll be fine. But uh, check that. Make sure you know what the. Make sure you know what the flow. Uh, I'm sitting here scratching. Oh God, bugs. So. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the narrows would be filled with bears. I love cutting these. Editing these is so much fun. Is it? No. Yeah. It's <laughs> horrible. Give them a wide bird. Who wear freaking cows? I don't know. It just. <laughs> what am I saying here? Oh, I like that. That's a good cut. <laughs> sort of. It's retarded, but it's perfect. Leave that out. Classy. <laughs> Classy. You're watching this to follow my advice. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful disaster of a video.